today, you know, today's session is going to be a little bit different, just in that it's, it, it's just hard not to be just thinking a lot about the, the larger world at this moment, especially the past few weeks. I mean, since COVID, of course, but you know, the, the last two weeks I watched both of the American presidential political conventions. One of these was talking about light. You know, Joe Biden gave this speech about how he wanted to bring light to darkness. Light to the darkness was a phrase he used several times. And then this past week was the Trump convention and that, that convention was all about darkness. It, it embraced the darkness and, and Trump warned of a, a world that's already dark that would become even darker if he was not in power. I would guess most of us in this room want to believe in the message of light, right? We, we are optimistic. We believe that if we choose differently, different things will happen, that this is just simple physics. And I think a, a lot of why we're here is because we believe in that. And we're looking for that lightness in the world. And, and we want to create that. And I feel that way too. It's, wh it's why I'm here. But there is another part of me deeper down that wonders whether the story of darkness is more credible. As people look at their lives, as we look around the world, if we don't see uh, even more darkness than light, and whether that message of darkness might have more resonance, even if it, say, is, has some fundamental mistruths that it's grounded in. You know, this has been a hard week to believe in the light. In, in the U.S., there was a, another unarmed black man shot by the police. In the days since, five protesters have been murdered. Four police officers have been killed. Black Americans and many Americans are feeling new levels of despair. There's a small town in Wisconsin that looks like a bombed out war zone. And the U.S. is on real edge. You know, around the world, Climate change is getting impossible to ignore as hard as we keep trying. There is the fires in the US and the hurricane, there's floods in Asia, heat uh, all summer throughout all the world. You know, I, I believe in miracles. I believe that things can get better. I believe that global warming can stop. Removing pollutants from the air is not impossible. It just takes a lot of effort. And, and I want to believe that, you know, that the story gets better. But at the same time, while being optimistic, I, I think we, we have a duty to be realistic and to also question whether this story that we've told ourselves that life will always get better, that we face up to that, that probably not actually being true. And that perhaps this past 80 to 100 years of world history of relative peace and general growing prosperity with many issues, but that maybe this period is more of the blip on the radar and periods of tumult and upheaval are a bit more common. I don't want that to be the case, but I, I do think that we have to be realistic optimists. And especially as Bentoists, I think we're actually well equipped to do that because we are already thinking of ourselves and thinking of, of time in terms of now and the future. We can distinguish that things aren't, won't always be the way that they are, and we try to be prepared. Looking around the world now, I, I think we have, to, we have to bring that sort of realistic perspective, and perhaps we have to challenge ourselves and, and say that it's possible that our standard of living and what we expect from society from the food we get to eat, to our freedom of movement, to the social relations, that those are all things that might be in a period of decline. Looking around the world, it kind of seems that way, right? I mean, we're, we're hoping some of these are blips in the radar, but it kind of feels like that's what is happening. And in my newsletter today, I wrote about a book called Limits to Growth. This book, it's a sort of analysis of the world by these MIT professors, systems thinkers, and they built a computer model that took all these inputs that they had in 1972 and just tried to project out what, what might happen based on this. And the big takeaway from the book is that 
we would have what they call an overshoot, which would mean that we would use more of the, res the Earth's resources than the Earth can restore, and we would just sort of be bleeding the Earth dry over time, especially as population grew. There's this one chart they show in the book that's pretty wild. They show this graph of human welfare, which they define as just your standard of living. And they are showing that this human welfare increases. And in the book, they say in the, like the most optimistic scenarios for humanity, around 2015, we would reach the limits of our human welfare. And from that point, we would begin a period of decline. Now, one thing they say is that this wouldn't be a decline like one day you wake up and the world is just awful. Instead, what would happen is that we would have to put more and more of our energy and our resources into trying to, say, solve these challenges of, of loss of resources or of an unstable environment. A lot of this was written before global warming was, was known about. We would have to be spending more of our energy and more of our resources to try to just basically stop up the dam. And as we would be doing that, our resilience would diminish and our ability to apply our energy to other things would, would diminish. And ultimately, this is where you start to see that decline. Now, now, the book talks about there are all these ways that that could be better. And it also stresses that a world of a declining human welfare does not mean like a dystopia. As we've seen with COVID, like we adjust to a new normal quite quickly. But it just does suggest that the dynamics of the world might be quite different. You know, one, one of the things that the, one of the authors of this book, Danella Meadows, who's a systems thinker, one of the things she writes about is that ultimately our undoing, if that were to happen in their models, comes from not some mega crisis, you know, the tidal wave that, you know, the mother of all tidal waves. It instead comes from a series of crises. And actually each one of these crises on their own might not be that big a deal but it's just the way they stack up on each other. And for anyone here who has spent time or is currently in a place of extreme economic insecurity, you know, my first 30 years of my life, I had, I had no money. And, and there you experience how vulnerable you are to the world, how your car breaking down can cause your entire life to crumble because you lack the resources to pay for it without taking from something else. And suddenly you find yourself in an incredible hole even from what seems like a, a small hurdle for somebody else. And so in, in, in Limits to Growth and in, in her writing, Danella Meadows says that the outcome of these kinds of problems is something like that. It's not this major moment, it's just that it piles up and we can feel that happening now. So I know this is bleak, and, and, but I don't think we can look away from this. You know, all this stuff might be wrong. No one knows anything. Again, I, I hope for the, the moonshot that, that fixes everything. But we are the ones who will live through this. You know, we're, we're not thinking of someone else. This is our future me that will have to live and contend with this world, our future us. That will become our now. It's happening at this moment. So what can we do about this? And this, this is the good news because we are here in the space of Bentoism, which is about trying to grapple with now and the future. It's about trying to grapple with our individual challenges and our collective challenges. It's, it's saying, we're saying straight up, like that's how we need to think about things. And there's a, a famous, maybe the most famous two by two, uh, you know, graph, simple graph ever. Uh, I think it's actually a pretty good model for how to think about this. This is called Pascal's Wager. This is the, the philosopher Pascal trying to, trying to decide whether or not to believe in God, whether or not to believe in God, and comes up with this simple graph that he shows that um, the upside of you believing in God and God existing is eternal happiness, heaven, which is amazing. Uh, the downside of you believing in God and God doesn't exist is nothing. Um, if, you, if God exists and you don't believe in God, then the potential outcome is eternal damnation, seems pretty bad. And the downsides of you not believing in God and God doesn't exist is that there's nothing happens. So here Pascal shows that there might be some thought of like what you want, but also there's this question of what, where's the upside and downside? How are you protecting yourself from one or the other? And in a sense, I think the bento is kind of showing us a similar map and a similar spirit for this moment where we are now, where 
there is a now kind of work to be done. And, but there's also a future kind of work to be done too. You know, the now work is about trying to change our behavior at this moment. I mean, l listen, the, the CO2 that's in the atmosphere now, it is baked in, right? It's going to be hard to remove that. A lot of the breakdowns of social trust, these are things that happened over time. These are not things that we can instantly fix. But at some point, at some point, this story has to change. And that happens in the now of our actions. So, so one part is what can we do just at this moment to try to shore up the dam, to bring the light, if we think the light is what's necessary. But there's another part of our mindset that has to be thinking about the future and has to be thinking, if I am or we are successful or unsuccessful, either way, how should I be thinking about the future? Say in a world where human welfare might be in some period of decline, say some of our professional goals, or like I want to visit every country on earth, or whatever those kinds of things might be for us, maybe those are less realistic. But I think what we'll find is in that kind of world, a harder world, that other values that we have would, would be even more important. In my newsletter this week, I, I mentioned a book about the history of Black Americans and cooperatives using co-ops. And it shows that going through slavery, uh, going through all the you know, post-Reconstruction, post-Civil War, how did Black Americans look out for one another? They formed co-ops, they formed bonds, they formed you know, trust with one another to look out for each other. The book talks about in the Great Depression was the greatest period for the creation of co-ops in history. During that period, the larger system start, stopped working for people, so people worked with one another instead. Now, this is, you know, th this is hard. This, there's a lot of pain that comes with this. But history would suggest that in these moments, that's what we do. We sort of look to different, um, different resources we have for resilience and strength. And so today, I want us to explore those things. And so we're going to go, we're going to do three exercises. First, we're going to do a journaling exercise where we're going to write about what we might do for the now and the future, thinking of this larger conversation. I'll, I'll give guidance on that in just a minute. After we write down those few things, we're going to get into breakout groups of three or four people. And we're going to share with each other what we said, what we would do for now to try to you know, have a positive impact, what we would do to prepare for a future where that was a little darker than we would like it to be. And once we've done that in groups, we'll come together and I'm going to have us all share in the chat window, just like what, what our groups came up with. What are the things that we thought about that we can do? And, and, and I'm certain that even as we look at this from a place of, of you know, some, some despair, some feeling of discouragement, but as we put these ideas out, as we see, as we put our brains together, I, I am confident that we are actually going to feel a surge of energy and, and feeling like there are plenty of things for us to do. And that approaching things with an optimistic realism is, is the right kind of energy to have. And the very last thing we'll do together is we'll, we'll create our bentos for the coming week. So for right now, if you could get a piece of paper or your computer's fine. And I'm just going to give us a simple um, prompt to explore this question of what to do about now, this crazy situation that we're in, things that you can do, and then what we can do for that future state. For this first one about now, I want us to all just try to write down, just be bulleted lists of ideas. What are things that you are doing now or could do now to try to keep us on course, to imagine, a, say, a world that, that hues, you know, stays more to the lightness, the light side versus the dark? Is it some contribution you make in your personal life? Is it something you do for your job? Just what, what are the ways that you are not just being a, a bystander to this moment, but you're trying to contribute? So we're going to start by just writing down a minute, and it could be things you currently do or just things you could do, but just what are things to do now to try to positively impact the larger world, your community? I'm going to put a, a minute on the clock, and we're just going to journal those down. Next, let's ask the same question, but here we're thinking about it from this sort of future place. And I want to let, I want to, you to let your mind go to a, a place of, say, 10 years from now, and things are worse, let's say, worse than they are now. What worse means to you, you, you can choose. If you imagine that world, what are the things that you could imagine doing to find to create strength, to create resilience? What might you lean on? What are, say, skills that you would lean on or a community or a way of thinking? 
or even what are things that you could be to give now almost to prepare yourself for that future state. But as you just imagine being strong in a, in a tougher world, being, being able to look out for your people, what are the things that you think about? What, what emerges to you? What, what do you hear? So let's just take a minute and write that down. So just right off, I, I wanna say that I'm certain nobody thinks their answers to this are good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure everyone's like, oh my goodness, why did I even write down? I'm sure we all feel that way, all right? So like nothing to be embarrassed or even discouraged about. Like we're, we're, we're in a different kind of space here. But my belief is that if we're with one another and we are sharing these things, that we're gonna hear some ideas that actually do feel true to us, that do feel resonant. So what I wanna do for the next 20 minutes is we're gonna go into these groups and we're gonna start, just say starting with now and each person in your group will go around and you'll just share the things you wrote down and now and don't like share them, share them. Don't, everyone's is gonna feel insignificant, whatever, don't, don't worry about it, just share them, all right? Uh, and you'll do the same with the future those future items. And then I would just ask you to have a, a conversation. And the conversation should just be like, let your energy be pulled towards the things that feel, that resonate, that feel real, that you believe in, that you, that you believe have some grounding in truth. And when we come back together, we're just gonna have each group, I'm gonna ask you to just post in your chat, like what are the three things, let's start, try to say three things for now and future that your group said. And then we'll have a little discussion about that, but again, Trust me, out of this process, we're going to go from feeling like what the hell to actually feeling, okay, we, maybe there's some things we can do here. All right. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back. So we'd love if we can, we can have a discussion. And while we're doing the discussion, we can post in chat, but post in chat the things that came up in your group. I'm going to post my list right now and I'll, I'll read it to you just to, to start us off, but we'd love to hear what came out of the group. So my now things I could do, I thought using the bento lens as a way to sort of see these different areas is like a, a, a very positive thing to do. Another now thing, participating in the political process. Third now thing, just sort of caring for the people, trying to, uh, I don't know, get them in a place of strength and resilience for what could happen. Future things I could do, embrace intentionally downward mobile living, just changing my expectations for what life should be, building my self-esteem and value on more replenishing values like togetherness. And then again, using the bento as just a way to see where I am. Would love to see other things in the comments or just hear from people. So what, what came out for folks? I, I genuinely feel better about the world having heard that. I don't know. I don't know if anyone else. I'm like, oh, okay, great. Yeah, I'm in. Sign, sign me up. Thank, thank you, Andrew. Thank you for sharing that. You know, one thought that occurs to me listening to Andrew and it's it's showing up over and over in the chat is is about that community and and finding that resilience in one another. And I, I for sure see this group as, as one of those communities. You know, I, I, I believe we will all have multiple of these in our life, but one thing it makes me think about is, is as we take this, you know, optimistic, realistic view of the world that we, we should perhaps be intentional uh, about the kind of community we are designing here, what, what it is we do want to be, in what ways we do want to be here for one another. Because there is, say, this, shared space where we come and talk to each other, but there are also all these other connections that happen and all these, I mentioned this idea in an email before, but all these sort of thirds that happen, you know, when two people come together, there's a third space created by them. And there's a lot of thirds around all of us. So, you know, we can actually think about how we want to design our energy in that way, you know, how it is that we are supporting or teaching each other. And I, and I think that's something we'll, we'll talk about at, a, at an upcoming session. But, so the very last thing we're going to do here in, in the final 10 minutes, and I love everything in the chat. I'm going to write some of these up later, um, and we could continue the, the conversation in Slack. The last thing I want to do is just prepare ourselves for just this week. So here we're thinking about the distant future and all these things. Well, let's think about the next seven days. So we'd love for you to just on a piece of paper, just draw a blank bento, just the four boxes of now me, I'll put the screen, uh, now me, future me, now us and future us, leaving those boxes themselves blank because we're going to write in them. 
And I'm doing the exact same thing right now. And just to get our heads right, would like to have everyone just uh, sit up straight and we're just gonna meditate together for just a minute or two and help sort of see these spaces. So I ask you to just sit with some good posture, close your eyes. And let's just start by breathing in through our nose and out through our mouth, just sort of eyes, head straight, looking straight forward, eyes closed, just three breaths. While keeping your eyelids shut, I want you to now open your mind's eye and begin to just scan your body and scan your mind, your emotional state. I want you to imagine you're looking with your mind's eye into a mirror at you at this very second. What are you feeling? Are you feeling more concerned because of our conversation today? Are you feeling peaceful? Do you feel connected? What is it that you feel in, in your mind and your body? Let's just scan ourselves right now. Lift your chin and look up and a little bit to the left. And imagine you're looking into the second story of an apartment building. And inside, is your now us, the people in your life that you care most about, your family, your friends, your coworkers, the people that you love the most. I want you to imagine all those people, all those faces, and now sit them around a giant dinner table. You sitting right there at the head and now I want you to take a Polaroid and imagine just seeing all those faces sitting there, all those people that are your us. I want you to move your head and chin looking to the right at eye level. You're looking at future me. This is the you 10 to 15 years from now living in what may potentially be a harder world. Even though times are tough, you're strong. You're a pillar of strength to your family and friends, to your community. You're ready to, to lead and, and be strong and love and enjoy life in this moment. You knew how to appreciate it. I want you to look at that future me, that older, wiser version of you. And I want you to feel the wisdom and the love that they look at you with. And they look at you that way because they know that you are becoming them, that the choices that you make and the life you lead will create a better future for you and those that you love. Now lift your chin, looking up to the right. We're looking into the space of future us. This is the world 15, 20 years from now. We don't yet know what it will look like, but we know that the actions we take today affect it. And we know that we will live in that world. We will exist in that world, just as the people that we love will. Our, our future us, that is the now us, the people we care about now, all of us, going through this hard thing together. So let's look into that space and just recognize that the decisions we make now materially impact that. Now turn your eyes, still close, but looking straight ahead. I want you to imagine you're standing tall and you're standing astride all four of these spaces, the now me, the now us, the future me, the future us. 
and your strength and in your stature, you, you exist in all these spaces. You, you hold them up, you carry them, you add to them. And all of these are who you are. One more breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Now open your eyes. And we're just gonna now write, we're gonna journal. Uh, and what we're gonna do is in this blank bento, we're gonna ask ourselves, what should I do with my energy this week? What should I do this week? And from each perspective, we're gonna start with the now me box in the bottom left. And so we're gonna ask that now me, just the person we are today, what do you wanna do? What do you need to do this coming week? Your now me is gonna tell you some errands or things to do, some self-care, work things to do. Let's write those down and make sure we take care of what needs to be taken care of. So one minute on the clock. All right, that's one minute. Now we're gonna look at the now us space in the top left. Our people, people we care about. Who do you need to take care of? Who do you want to reach out to? Whose love do you wanna feel uh, in the next seven days? So let's take a minute and just note who we want to give to. Next, we're gonna look at future me, the box in the bottom right. Future me, you're listening to that older, wiser version of you and you're, you're hearing its words of wisdom, you're hearing its mantras, its advice, it's telling you, think about this, don't think about that, worry about this, don't worry about that, or it's reminding you of some larger project to keep your focus on. But when you listen to that voice, that more knowing future voice, what does it say to you? Let's take one minute and journal that down. Last, we have future us. Future us is kind of what we, we started off today talking about, this sort of unknown that we face. 
as we imagine taking up our responsibility today for that future, for those of us here who are maybe more aware than others of what may be coming and who are trying to incorporate the future into our thinking, what should we do in the next seven days to model the kind of behavior that we need? How can we begin those habits? How can we teach or learn or better prepare ourselves and those around us for this future? So we'll take one minute and think about what we can do in the next seven days, what simple actions we can take. All right. So I would encourage you as a approach this week that you keep what you've written here in front of you. I keep it next to my desk. I cross things out or check them when they happen. But this is my kind of refresher of how I want to be using my energy. So instead of just checking my email for the 50th time in an hour, instead I'll look at this and think, well, what here can I be doing? Maybe I'll call a friend or something instead. So I find this is a, a really nice way to just expose myself to, I think, what I actually want, what is actually important to me. You could also organize it into a, a to-do list, you know, if you operate that way, or a Trello board. Um, but I think incorporating this perspective just into your day-to-day -day is really helpful, and it's what manifests that, these kinds of realities. You know, I, I want to thank you all for being here and 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 also for participating in a in a heavier conversation and and, and one sort of looking into some of the darkest places around us and, and maybe accepting the idea that not everything is going to work out the way that we want, but thinking how do we respond in that moment? How are we prepared in that moment? Because we'll especially be needed then. Well, thank you all so much for being here. I I cherish this time to such a great degree and really appreciate this conversation today. I just encourage all of us to, to really take this to heart and, and, and to, live, to live our daily life with this kind of awareness. I, I think that's what the bento lets us get closer to and, and conversations like this one are important in that larger journey. Thank you for your time, uh, love you all, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Yancy. Thanks, Yancy. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.